Welcome back. Today, let's talk about the truth about the border crisis. We're going to look at some of the rhetoric being used around the border, and we're also going to see what's actually happening at the border itself and look at the conditions there. Before we get started, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell so you can always stay informed and get the sources I provide down below. Let's do this. So, basically the reason I decided to do this video today was because of some comments made by AOC surrounding the border. So she recently essentially called the detention camps and detention centers we have down there concentration camps. And after doing so, she got a lot of pushback and she decided to double down and has done several t Twitter threads by now about this. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, before we do that, there were a number of people who supported her and agreed with her, including experts and historians and people of that nature. But there are also a fair amount of people, even those on the left, who disagree and say that she shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to show why, in my opinion, I don't think it's accurate, or rather I don't think it's helpful to call the border camps or the detention camps concentration camps. I think there's a negative connotation there that doesn't apply and it just shouldn't be used. So my main point here is that what experts deem a concentration camp and what historians call it is not necessarily what the American public is going to think about when they hear concentration camp. That while it may not be specific to Nazi Germany, which it certainly isn't based on their definitions, in America today, that is the first thing that comes to mind when you call something a concentration camp. So to kind of, I guess, show this point, I decided to do a simple Google search of concentration camps. The first thing you see after the news stories is on the right hand side, you see a whole bunch of images and things related to spe specifically to Nazi Germany and the concentration camps there. They also have a uh, Britannica definition of concentration camp that I decided to look at, and it has the general definition where it talks about a place where you keep political prisoners or members of minority for a specific reason, but it does distinguish and it says they are also to be distinguished from refugee camps or detention and relocation centers. So according to this definition, I would argue that it isn't even a concentration camp. But to take it one step further, I decided to look at the sources that were just below those on the same Google search page, you find that two more sources directly related to Nazi Germany and the concentration camps there. And then the definition by Miriam Webster is given here. And again, it says used especially in reference to camps created by the Nazis in World War II. So once more, I do not think it's necessarily incorrect of AOC to refer to these as concentration camps, because if she is using the definition by these experts, then that is certainly the case. However, it is also certainly the case that when the average American or the average person thinks about concentration camps, they don't really think about much else besides the concentration camps in Nazi Germany. So I think it's disingenuous to refer to them as concentration camps, because while that may be the case, I do not think it's the I do not think it's the best way to refer to them or the best way to move forward. So the first thing I want to talk about are these human dog pounds. Now this is a term that's been going around a lot on Twitter. Uh, I know AOC has put it forth several times. And it's basically what you see in this picture is that, for instance, in El Paso, there was a reporter who went and they, they saw this. This picture is from El Paso. And they talked to these immigrants who were being held outside. And according to them, they'd been held outside for upwards of a month. And so they made these makeshift shelters to try and keep themselves out of the sun. I think we can all agree that if you're holding someone in a detention center, but they're not even in the center, they're actually outside of which, and they're being held in this enclosed location by a fence, that just doesn't look very good. That's not a very humane thing to do. And they will argue that there's not enough space for them inside. They don't have enough beds and all these sorts of things. But I still think it's important to look at this and see what what has happened at, at least at this one location. I'm not claiming this is happening at every other location because this was one of the few references or original references I could find is something like this, but it is happening at at least one location and that's important to know. Furthermore, there is something else that often gets thrown around a term where they use freezer or sometimes human freezer. And what this is referring to is a location by the Custom and Border Patrol where, again, if they don't have enough space in their actual centers where they have the beds and all of those things, they have this place called a freezer where it's kind of an, an offside, there's really not much in there. And basically they just put people in there, they give them mats and aluminum foil blankets to try and keep themselves warm, but it's called a freezer because it tends to get very cold. I'm, I guess there's not much regulation as far as temperature goes, so it's kind of 
It just kind of is what it is. In a specific Twitter thread, I saw that AOC actually shared, there is someone who claims that these locations get down as low as 55 degrees, which I was unable to corroborate that. So I'm not sure if that's true because that was just from a secondhand source. But there is a lot of consensus that it does get too cold. And at least it's, it's so cold that it's uncomfortable for the immigrants. Now, before you kind of jump on this and say that this image is from 2015, which is true, just because it happened during one administration does not mean it's acceptable under another administration, right? So this specific image is from 2015, which is during the Obama administration, but it is still happening today during the Trump administration. And just because it happened before doesn't mean it's okay now. Another thing that came out in the news recently it was just this week, actually, was that there was a Trump administration official who argued in front of a court and in front of judges that the conditions of safe and sanitary facilities does not require them to give soap or toothbrushes to children. There is no way to argue that as a government official who is responsible for these children, that not giving them soap and toothbrushes is a good way to go. There's just no way to look at that in a positive light. So now I kind of want to talk about, before I stop, some of the, I guess, reasoning behind the right and the left. And this is just how I see it. This isn't obviously how everyone is going to argue, but I think it's important if you're on the right to see where the left is coming from and vice versa. About a month and a half ago, because of the influx of immigrants at the border, Trump requested 4.5 additional million for Border Patrol and for them to just use how they saw fit. And I believe something like 3 million was to be used specifically for humanitarian aid. And none of this money was going to go towards building a border wall. As of yet, and again, this was a month and a half ago, it has not been approved by the Democratic controlled House. So if you're on the left, if you're a Democrat, you can look at that and say, of course, it's not going to be approved. We just looked at all these horrific conditions the immigrants were being held in. Why should we approve to give more money to organizations like ICE and CPD who are doing these horrific things? And I think there's some truth or some logic to that. However, if you're on the right, you look at that and you might say that all of these things are the Democrats' fault because if they're not giving the funding that is needed to improve these situations, then they're the ones that they're the ones to blame. Now, I don't think either of those is entirely accurate, but I also don't think they're entirely wrong. We have these organizations that even if you don't like the way they're doing things and you argue they may be doing things poorly, if you don't give them funding that they need, things will get even worse. And if you're on the right, I don't think it's accurate to claim that the Democrats just don't care about the border because they're not giving money because they don't want to give money again to organizations that they do not approve of. Much in the same way, a lot of Republicans don't like giving money to Planned Parenthood. That's what's happening on the border. That's my take on it. I plan on doing another video about immigration a little bit later to talk about um, more about the crisis and the influx and how many immigrants we actually are getting and how many we have. All that being said, I want to know what you think about all this, what you think about the concentration camp, but also about what is happening at the border itself. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. If you appreciate, if you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe, and again, just comment with your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.